Hello Warriors, welcome to the U Movement. Uh, it's a glorious day. We are in July. Saturn is retrograde. Neptune is retrograde. Things are shifting. Woot woot for some and for others it might be shifting in uh, ways that have you facing some dark stuff. Uh, last year around this time I did a video entitled uh, The Root Cause of Everything is a Love De Deficit. And if you didn't watch that video, I'll put the link to it in the description below uh, so that you can hop on and watch that. So this is kind of a follow up with that because that's what's been mulling around in this old noggin uh, for the last few days it is the whole concept of uh, I just want it to be loved. <laughs> So as you know, those that have been following me, um, I have been uh, facing my own shadow sides of self and dealing with my own codependencies uh, to uh, beat that energy and transmute it on out uh, so I don't need to repeat any of those same uh, karmic lessons uh, that I've already experienced in my life uh, more than enough times. Thank you very much. Uh, so in facing uh, my shadow and doing a lot of uh, inner child work and a lot of healing work uh, to uh, address uh, the fundamental root cause, it brings me back to that video that I did about a year ago being the root cause of everything is a love deficit. And uh, those uh, that know a little bit about my background uh, who have been following me from the beginning, um, know that, uh, you know, I, I suffered from uh, an adoption at a later stage uh, than is uh, usually uh, normal, I suppose. Well, what is normal? Uh, <laughs> um, I was adopted at two and a half. Uh, so that uh, caused a, a major uh, disruption in my attachment uh, and c created this whole uh, anxious attachment style. Uh, and then uh, I was raised and adopted by an, a very uh, malignant narcissist uh, who um, placed me in the role of scapegoat and uh, that everything that comes along with that positioning of, you know, I can do no right and everything I do is a fuck up and I make bad decisions and uh, there was uh, physical abuse, emotional abuse, uh, psychological abuse, uh, I'm going to flag as being uh, the most disruptive to my um, ability to, to grow up uh, appropriately, which then once you, once you have these wounds inside of you, this energy inside of you, you go out and you um, perpetuate uh, this type of uh, karmic cycle with friends and uh, with romance and uh, with relationship uh, and with workplaces and everything. Because as I've said, when, once, uh, once this is established as a program that is uh, the familiar program and the what is um, feels normal to you, uh, that's what you're going to gravitate towards. And so um, on my journey uh, after my um, Kundalini awakening and I was trying to figure out like what the F is happening to me because I had no clue. Um, uh, I did a lot of research uh, into understanding um, now the twin flame journey, uh, so to speak. And I've talked a bit about that. But the point was uh, of my readings, um, I kept coming up with the same uh, type of answer, which is, you know, you, this is your journey home to self. Uh, that you need to learn to love yourself. And so I, I was like, well, learn to love myself? Uh, how the hell do I do that? Uh, I've never been shown what love is. If you don't know what love is, how, how do you learn to love yourself? You know, all these lovely uh, quotes out there, you know, well, if you just love yourself, then everything else will follow. You know, like, well, Thanks, Captain Obvious, but if I loved myself, then I would know how to love myself. <laughs> but if you'd never been shown and you've been raised in an environment where you were, um, uh, uh, suffered from a lot of traumas, uh, you know, abandonment uh, and or uh, 
uh, narcissistic abuse, emotional neglect, uh, you know, raised in an alcoholic family, or perhaps uh, raised in a family that was so immense, uh, so um, embedded in their own uh, generational trauma, or perhaps there was religious trauma that was going on. So like there's just trauma, trauma and more trauma. There's cultural trauma, there's birth trauma, there's, uh, you name it, there's trauma, trauma and trauma. And what trauma does is it like sucks out love. <laughs> Where there is wounds, uh, there is an absence of love and, and a true love unconditional love, not this conditional love that we expect our children to show up in a certain way and behave in a certain way and be quiet and look a certain way and make the good grades. And these are all conditions that we place upon children. And a, a narcissist place even more conditions on a child because it's like handing a script and saying, okay, I need you to fill this role. And this role is either the, the scapegoat and therefore, you know, all of my woundings is going to be placed upon you and projected outwards onto you. You are the carrier of crap. And uh, I'm going to script this child over here as the golden child. And uh, I'm going to script your script as you can do no wrong. Um, so you can do no right. You can do no wrong, uh, which is equally a very difficult position to be in. Because if you're not allowed to make mistakes, uh, then there's a, an immense amount of fear in when you do make a mistake. Where over here is like, all I do is make mistakes. So uh, trying, this is always trying to prove uh, I'm worthy, I'm worthy, I'm proved. When will you love me? When will you love me? And this one is like, you love me so much. It's so overbearing. It's so uh, that I want to escape. I want to escape from this. This is like, I can't be, neither can be themselves. Neither is allowed to be authentic. And uh, what I'm learning is there's more roles at play. Uh, you know, one, uh, a child can be the, the truth seeker or the truth teller. Uh, that was me. Um, I would call out uh, uh, from a very young age, bad behavior and say, you know, you're mean. I, I would say outright, you're mean, uh, which would land me in a load of hurt and I'd get way more punishment for, you know, calling out the truth. And, um, because a narcissist doesn't want to be shown the truth. They want you to play your roles. So it's like they're playing their children become their, their toys. And they're playing a grown up version of house with their toys. And they'll dress you how they want and they'll position you how they want. And they'll take you here and take you there and show you off in different lights. But uh, you don't have any right to just be uh, yourself. And, and so love becomes uh, transactional. Uh, when you perform like the trained circus animal that I have trained you to be and you follow your scripts and you uh, show up in the way that I demand you to show up, um, then I will reward you with uh, intermittent uh, love bombing. Then I will reward you with breadcrumbs. Then I will reward you, uh, you know, with, you know, m in my case, it was like, here, I'm going to give you $500 for your birthday because you've been good. And you'd be like, oh, wow, you know, that's... <sighs> It, that was like the most amazing thing. It, it was like a, a, tr a tr literal transactional for for um, showing up in certain way. It also made them feel uh, good about themselves to be able to like uh, be the the controller, the queen that I can sit in my uh, in my throne and I'm gonna throw out uh, um, others and have them perform to my bidding. You know, my father played the role of the hellhound, and when she said. Uh, go punish. Uh, he would bark, a uh, mean bark, and come uh, after me, and uh, and I'd get double the punishment, or get flying monkeys involved, where she would enlist it, enlist others, uh, to say, if you don't know the term flying monkey, I'll just uh, th throw a little background there. So. Um, the term flying monkey comes from the movie, uh, The Wizard of Oz, wherein the witch uh, would send her monkeys out to do her bidding. So uh, narcissistic individuals are notorious for getting in the ears uh, of other people and uh, getting them to say what, you know, it, it's like puppeteering. Um, oh, you should be, aren't you so lucky? You know, you've, you, your mom does this for you. And, and then you're like, 
oh, should I be so lucky? So it's like you're being gaslit through others. <laughs> um, and, and so, um, you know, this, this programming that uh, is running is the mon mental fuckery that I talk about that is psychological abuse of, of narcissistic abuse. And so that becomes the, the default program. If we are a biological computer and our default program is to uh, accept breadcrumbs, the occasional uh, bit of, of uh, positive reinforcement, uh, because no abusive situation is 100% abusive 100% of the time. It it's, uh, can be exceptionally abusive 60% of the time. 70% uh, of the time and then it fluctuates back into something good and, and so that's constantly keeping the nervous system out of whack which means you're easier to control because if, if your nervous system is out of whack and you're in a constant state of fight or flight um, you're responding from reactions from an adrenal system as opposed to responding from things from a centered aligned place so um, how we program our children uh, and how we've been programmed now as uh, adult uh, ch children who, who are adults now, but at, in our childhood, we're raised in these traumatic environments is we need to relearn, reprogram, reparent uh, all of these um, programs and default settings in the mind. And so what comes with the default settings, once you've been programmed with these scripts, uh, is a lot of self-loathing, a lot of self-hatred, a lot of harsh internal criticism, um, beating self up when we make a mistake, um, shame, guilt, uh, shame is a big one uh, uh, for because uh, the shame is projected onto. I had previously done uh, a, a piece of artwork uh, depicting the the cord that is a, a bind between an empath and a narcissist because the empath sucks in uh, uh, all of the shame uh, from a narcissist and, and gives out uh, love and adoration in, in, in attempts to like, love me, I'm worthy, uh, give me, you know, please, please, please. So the narcissist laps up the light and says, yes, I'm so wonderful, I'm so fantastic. Here, take my, my dirty shame, take my dirty shame. I don't wanna have any of this, so I'm gonna put it all onto you. And it's like we, we are this filtration system. Uh, and uh, so we need to reprogram so the filtration system becomes clean. Because what happens is if you have been experiencing years and years and years of this um, shame and blame and uh, rejection and criticism and judgment, uh, and you've been absorbing that, absorbing it, absorbing it is, well, look what happened is uh, I became uh, vastly obese. I had um, severe uh, health problems uh, ranging from like a full gamut, diabetes, fibromyalgia, sleep apnea, uh, peripheral neuralgia, um, brain fog oh my god the confusion and and the decreasing of level of intelligence uh, through the years as it continued uh it led to me failing an alzheimer's test uh, and and because i couldn't remember things like table you know i'd be like can you put this on the um on the uh thing that um uh, and I would, I was seriously like stuck in this brain fog and this, uh, my, my mind was just, uh, um, in, in a state of complete and utter shutting down as with my body, because, um, the biggest health crisis is a state of stress. And well, if your adrenal system and your, your nervous system is constantly firing and I equate narcissistic abuse to be like a cattle prod that's constantly electrocuting you. You know, you're not behaving correctly. You're not doing what I say. You're not showing up how I, I'm gonna give you the blame, you know. So it's like constantly being prodded. And, and so this is your familiar state of, of constantly being like energetically electrocuted. 
and, and then uh, you continue on because you're like, well, I should love my parent and I should take care of my parent and I should, and I should, and I should, because that's the way you've been indoctrinated, uh, you know, because society as a whole says walking away from a parent is abhorrent. Why would you do that? That's terrible. Oh, you know, so then you get extra shame and blame and hurt thrown at you and extra trauma for trying to individuate yourself. Oh, my cats are not having a good time of it. And so then th this becomes your norm. And once it becomes your norm, you go out and you then uh, have more situations uh, that contribute to this uh, because that's what you tracked in. Uh, and so you'll have uh, friends uh, that uh, do the same kind of thing they'll show up and you know love bomb you for like 24 hours and then disappear for six months and i i was under the impression that's what friendship was i i thought friendship was you don't see each other uh you don't talk to each other you just have the occasional uh um intermittent positive reinforcement and then the rest of the time it, it was like no um and then I got into an exceptionally abusive uh, a marriage, which all of those same childhood wounds uh, were constantly being prodded without me having any kind of, I, I was so brainwashed uh, in, into thinking that this was normality that, uh, I, you know, well, nothing's perfect. I should tolerate, uh, you know, a certain degree of raging or passive aggressiveness and uh, controlling and micromanaging and financial abuse and stress. You know, I, I basically have been living in a state of stress for my entire life up until uh, I finally you know, escaped. And that's the beginning of this year. And I'm 51 now. So I'm learning what it is to be safe. I'm learning what it is to be calm. I'm learning what it is uh, to, to be secure. And, and so in this process, when my Kundalini uh, was activated, and I, 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 my heart chakra went and uh, if you haven't seen that video, just a couple days ago, I, I did a, a video on that story. So I won't repeat it. But uh, what I learned is that uh, for me to be able to uh, get through what I was doing, what was happening to me, the only way was going to be self-love. And I didn't know what that was. So I actually did a Google search and I'm like, how do you love yourself? How, how, how do you uh, begin to uh, reprogram? How do you begin to start giving yourself self-love? And so I read website after website that, you know, listed everything from give yourself a nice bubble bath to, uh, you know, stop negative self-talk. And I was like, aha, well, that's the first one it is the internal dialogue and starting to listen to the program, actually listen to the program because you can't change the program if you're not uh, recognizing from an observer point of view what it is, how it is you're talking to yourself. And so then every time that I heard uh, something negative, like you're so stupid, oh, you, you fucked up again, or you know, you're a bad person. I used to wonder all the time, like, am I a bad person? Like, what, what is happening? And, and so, you know, I had to then learn and to go through and reprogram. So using affirmations has been huge on my uh, awakening process because I write them down, I put them on a wall, I record them and I listen to them. I, I say them in the moment. If you catch yourself saying something harsh and critical, definitely hop onto the opposite energy as soon as you can. You know, if you're like, I'm not worthy of love, catch yourself and say, hey, wait a second, that's not entirely true because, uh, and, and if and if you're finding that you are, are arguing over a program, because there will be a stage of, of argument, uh, you need to go and prove the this opposite. So once you've identified what the program is, what the root cause, I don't have value, I, uh, I have, I lack co confidence. I, I'm an imposter, you know, people are gonna figure me out, imposter syndrome, I used to have that one huge is to sit down and make lists and do some journal work and do some, you know, the actual going in and doing some work to say, okay, wait a second, who am I really? Who who am I? Okay, I, I am loving, I am kind and, and make a list. I am this, I am that. All of the things that you are and put that list of all the positive qualities and attributes that you are uh, on the wall, which are going to give you your countering information. So if you think you're unlovable, 
uh, then you're going to discover, okay, well, actually, I have all of these actual lovable traits. Uh, so, hmm, why, where is the disconnect here? Uh, I, I very much thought that I was unlovable because I was told, literally told, I was unlovable. Um, when I turned uh, to my mother, um, December 2021 and told her that I had uh, asked for a divorce you know I, I was waking up to the reality that I'm being abused uh, well I wasn't at that time I was just waking up to the reality that, that my marriage uh, was terrible and was never ever going to get better um, her response was to tell me that that was the, a stupid mistake uh, I am unlovable uh, no one uh, will ever love me uh, I am useless uh, and can't do anything. I'm incapable of doing anything. And I hung up the phone and that was one of the last times I ever spoke to my mother. And, and uh, to, for me to cut uh, that person out of my life, being my mother, uh, and uh, was uh, the hardest, one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do. I, I immediately started going into extreme PTSD and uh, had all kinds of anxiety symptoms happening at that point in time, which uh, de really uh, debilitated my progress in trying to establish freedom for myself, um, but uh, initiated the first uh, of um, uh, uh, what turned into uh, a, a long process, a, a three-year process uh, of reprogramming and reparenting uh, so that I could alter that program of you're unlovable, uh, you're un incapable. And um, it, it was a, a very uh, dedicated daily practice of reprogramming, uh, reparenting. And when I say reparenting, I want to talk about that for a little bit because reprogramming is uh, kind of basic in the sense that identified what the program is and then part two, uh, replace that program with new programming, new thought patterns, new beliefs about self. And the best way to do that is to observe uh, what the programming is, listen to how you talk to yourself on the inside, and then replace it with uh, affirmations that counter that and uh, start to believe it. And it, it, there is a midpoint uh, in the affirmations of working with affirmations that you need to know about, which is, um, I am learning to, I am uh, willing to become, so make it a verb, add ing in the middle of that verb, you know, I, I am uh, adapting, I am, I am transmuting, there, there is an action that says, I'm not there yet fully, but I am learning to love myself, I am learning to become, that to believe I am worthy, I am learning, so you can do a midpoint uh, to get you to the place where you're like, I am lovable. I am worthy, I am valuable and believe it. Uh, because if you're saying affirmations that you don't believe, you're only perpetuating the strength of the, the, the original programming. So uh, on the quest to learn to love the fuck out of myself uh, required a lot of reparenting. And what I talk about reparenting is showing up for yourself in the energy that you wish you had received, that you deserved to receive, all of us did, that you, that you should have uh, received when you were a child. So if in that moment that you make a mistake and you can catch yourself starting to go down the path of uh, beating yourself up, say stop and talk to yourself the way a parent would talk to a child that made a mistake, a loving parent that is, and say, it's okay to make mistakes. That's how we are human. We show, we make mistakes is how we learn. Um, it's gonna be okay. We can clean this mess up. You know, if you drop something and I made a huge mess yesterday and made a mess all over my house. And I was like, I immediately wanted to go back into the old program and, and call myself bad names. And I was like, whoa, no, we're not going, we're not revisiting that again. People make mistakes. We learn from our mistakes. We're going to, do, to, to try to do things differently in the future so that we can rectify the mistakes and do things better. You know, when we know better, we do better. And even then, when we know better, we still make mistakes. And then we're like, oh, I did it again. And, uh, and then it's like, yep, you did it again. Well, this time you're really going to learn. <laughs> I'm like, yep, this time I really, really learned this lesson. Uh, so 
you know, reprogramming uh, takes a little bit uh, of time and a lot, a lot of practice. Uh, and then reparenting takes a lot of compassion and gentle energy, nurturing. If you can think maybe sometimes it's hard when you don't have a, a reference point of a parent uh, because you didn't have that parent growing up that was there for you. So maybe find a reference point of a parent that is uh, somebody outside of you. And it doesn't mean that they have to be older than you or whatever. If you have a friend that's like an amazing parent and you're like, wow, I wish I had a parent like them. Uh, you can use uh, that reference point uh, of a good parent because uh, then you can say, well, what would this person uh, do if their child did this? And then you can think about it and you have, well, they would probably say this or do this or, you know, oh, I saw a good parent on a TV show or a movie. And in that moment when that kid behaved like this in this situation, uh, they said this. So start saying those types of things to yourself. Give yourself hugs, give yourself touch, uh, give yourself uh, all kinds of soothing you know, and, and comfort and, and it's okay. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And it may feel odd and feel weird uh, to start touching yourself <laughs> because you may have been raised with the, uh, you know, indoctrination that touching yourself is like, no, no, tab taboo. Yeah, and, and it's not. <laughs> to, to, to give yourself care and comfort and to treat your own body, your own vessel <laughs> that your soul is residing in with, with soothing, compassionate, uh, loving care uh, is going to help transmute these wounds a lot faster. So uh, in, your mo in that moment when you're triggered and you're emotional and your inner child is expressing itself, instead of uh, saying, Shh, don't do that or taking the drink to shove the down the energy or taking the cigarette to, to repress and self-soothe through uh, nicotine uh, which is a heart chakra wound you know all of our addictions are, are uh, related to wounds each and every one of them and I've done a video on the chakra system and addictions uh, it would be in the chakra playlist uh, so uh, understanding where your addictive behaviors uh, are, are playing out will help you understand uh, which chakra is associated with it and therefore help you understand what childhood wound is interconnected. So it goes, uh, it's, it's like micro, it, it's like those uh, transparent papers, one on top of each other on top of each other. And when you look through them all, they make a, a, a picture. If you do art on, on, I don't know if you know that, that art, my mind comes up with weird uh, visualizations sometimes. <laughs> That's all right. It works for me. Uh, transparencies. Have you ever seen? Yeah. Have you ever seen those like they're with epoxy, they're painting like fish and then they do another layer of epoxy and then they paint another layer. So it's like a, a three dimensional uh, uh, depiction uh, of art. And so that's exactly what it is when it comes to, to trauma and uh, wounding on top of uh, the root core uh, issue. So the root core issue is a child wound that has uh, happened because of trauma and the trauma sits on top of it. And then on top of the trauma, we have all of our coping mechanisms and on top of our coping mechanisms uh, and thought patterns and beliefs and everything, we have our addictions. And on top of our addictions, uh, we, we have de denial. And on top of denial, we have delusion. And, and so it become, it's all piled up on top, on top, on top. And so that's why you know we have to dig through all the muck to get down to the root core issue of the, this little inner child has been wounded at a certain age and stage and so when we are triggered um all of this stuff gets activated because at the very base of it the inner child is screaming out saying ah help me <laughs> and instead of helping and listening and caring and showing compassion we we say shush and we do we perpetuate the same um stuff over and over and over again and as the saying goes, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So if you want different results, you need to behave differently. And one way to do that is uh, to treat yourself differently. Treat yourself with actual, physical, loving, kind touch. 
uh, your body is so vitally important on this uh, healing journey. And I keep coming back to the body is the root uh, uh, of importance when it comes to everything is built upon that. So first we have the body and the body holds the trauma. On top of the body, we have our emotional realm. We have our emotional center uh, from an auric field that it resides just outside of the body. We have a feeling about things uh, before uh, we get physically touched. For example, you walk into a funeral and you're like, whoa, you know, it's a sad vibe in here. That's because uh, you can feel it before you're like touching it, before anyone speaks to you, before you have any actual interaction, uh, you're, you're, you're picking up on it. Then outside of that is the mental realm. So then on top of the emotional body is our mental body. On top of the mental body is the spiritual body. And so on, it gets uh, more and more etheric as it goes. So from dense into the most etheric layers of your own auric field uh, is how all of this uh, it, it spreads out. So if we get back down into the body, into the body, uh, then loving the body, how well are you treating your body? Now, I treated my body like absolute crap. If you've seen the pictures of me, my before pictures, uh, I was so disassociated outside of my body uh, because of the trauma that existed in me uh, that, uh, you know, I was caught in the mind. I was caught in depression uh, for an extended period of time. I wouldn't even look at myself when I went by the mirror. So uh, bringing yourself back into the body as much as you possibly can as a form of self-love and whether that be, you know, uh, taking care of of your overgrown cuticles, giving your feet with a scrub and getting rid of the calluses, doing yoga to get your body back into alignment, going for a walk in nature and just feeling uh, with your senses and hearing the birds and seeing all the beautiful things. So get into the body as a form of self-love. Uh, that is a fundamental self-love. I don't subscribe to the beliefs that self-love means um, necessarily having to alter yourself dramatically in any ways because is that really loving? I found on my journey that wasn't. So a lot of these might say, you know, go get a manicure or, and well, sure, if you want to have somebody file your nail for you, but as soon as you begin to alter yourself in any way, shape or form, my personal opinion is it's like saying I'm I, I'm not good as I am. I'm not loving as I am. I have to alter myself in some way to make myself more loving. If I have to dye my hair, wear makeup, um, put on certain clothes, squeeze myself in, raise my boobs up to here, you know, like by the time you're like, you know, how is that loving yourself when it's depriving yourself, denying yourself and uh, masking, literal masking yourself? And I wanted to love me, who I am, not who society says I should look like as a woman. Oh, I should have long hair and I should have eyelashes that, you know, and I should do this and I should do that. And not only do you save a whole bunch of money when you stop buying into this whole uh, industry that tells women that they're not beautiful as they are, uh, all of a sudden you have money to be doing other things uh, that you might want to do, like buying the more nutritious foods that uh, cost a little bit of an extra premium because you deserve it. You are worthy of it. And when you love yourself, you're like, you know what, this uh, very nice, protein powder that's got all of the like nutrients in it that costs over $50. I, I deserve that. I'm going to treat myself to that because uh, I'm loving and well, I'm not uh, wasting money on things that I don't need anymore because I love myself as I am, my body as it is. Uh, I, I'm not altering it in any way, shape or form. And I did a video uh, called Unmasking the Divine Feminine a while back. Uh, about all the things that society says to a woman, you know, you need to change this, you need to shave that, you need to pluck this, pierce that. Like, I, I mean, like, hey, listen, if you want to do things, that's fantastic. You do whatever is going to make you happy. If that makes you feel like uh, I, I'm being so loving to, to get yourself, like I get tattoos, that's loving to me. That's me decorating my, my, my temple, uh, but, um, 
it, it just makes me sad when I see people spending huge amounts of money that they don't necessarily have, as well as altering themselves so dramatically that they no longer even look like themselves anymore. And uh, authenticity, I, I want to I appreciate people that look like themselves, whatever they look like, you know, I, I, I have, that to me is real beauty um, and courage to show up in a, in a society and say, you know, this is me and love me or leave me, this is who I am. And this is my skin, this is my, <laughs> these, these are, you know, my body parts as they are uh, not being squeezed in and cinched and all the rest, you know. I, I, I let go of, of uh, that and in so doing, I was able to just be comfortable being back in my body probably for the first time ever, uh, you know, because when, when you carry a lot of weight, you carry a lot of shame, you carry a lot of guilt, you carry a lot of trauma, you carry a lot of uncried tears, you carry a lot of unscreamed screams, you carry a lot of anger. And uh, that's what's all stored in there. Uh, and, and so the more we can uh, express ourselves and, and use our emotions uh, to help our bodies uh, clear it out, purify, purge, all of these things that are, are part of this awakening process, you know, and I've equated it oftentimes as like the universe coming along and squeezing you like a ketchup sachet and getting all the gunk out, you know, getting it all out. So uh, love yourself on every realm, love your body, love your emotions, uh, love your mind uh, from an observer point of view. Your mind is useful, but it lies to you quite frequently. And uh, if you've been programmed with a lot of trauma, uh, you don't be loving into that. Uh, you replace uh, the negative thoughts, the negative thinking, the negative self-talk, and you replace it with love and kindness and care. And then love yourself on the spiritual realm. Love your soul that's trying very desperately uh, to move you into your highest and greatest uh, life. Uh, for your betterment. It doesn't always feel like that and your ego might resist. Mine fought it tooth and nail. Uh, but at the end of the day, all of this process has been for my highest and greatest good. I'm healthier I, than I've ever been in my entire life. Um, I, I'm more able to handle stress than I've ever been in my life, uh, even though I, I'm still dealing with that one because reprogramming the nervous system takes a lot of time and reprogramming uh, the, the, the mind takes a lot of time as well. So learning patience along this process as we go through uh, a, a transformation and a U-turn on life and, and say, I'm not going down this path anymore. I, uh, this path of self-destruction uh, is a, a U-turn back into self, back into self-love, self-care and compassion. So with that said today, I'm hoping all of you uh, find the love that you deserve uh, that you are valued. I uh, apologize for the dog in the background. He's wanting to contribute and say, love yourself too. <laughs> and uh, love, 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 love the fuck out of yourself. And as I've mentioned in multiple videos, when you alter uh, what's going on inside of you, uh, what happens outside of you will begin to alter as well. And so I have been blessed beyond blessed to have Soul Tribe uh, start to show up in my life and show me love and show me compassion. And all of you out there that have been showing me love and showing compassion, I am so unbelievably grateful for that because where I started from, uh, um, you know, at the beginning of this awakening was not a healthy or good or loving place. Uh, it, it was not. It, it was a very dark and depressed place that I lived in for uh, most of my life. And I'm so grateful to be into the light and to be experiencing not only my own love, uh, but to finally understand what love is and, and to experience it from others as well. And I, I'm so unbelievably grateful uh, for all, all of the support and all of the love uh, that you send my way. And I send it back and uh, in multitudes. That said, um, I hope you all have a wonderful day. And if you need any help, feel free to reach out. And uh, the way to do that is in the description below. Uh, thank you again for all of the shares, the likes, and the subscriptions. It means the absolute world to me. And uh, peace out. <laughs>